We can go ahead, Michelle, the floor is, is yours. Okay, I will call the meeting to order at 1.22 p.m. You might have to remind me of everything yep. that I have to do, but is it Pledge of Allegiance Yep, now? Pledge of Allegiance. You want to stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag. flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. All right. Carrie? Here. Miraculously. Uh, Nancy? Here. Michelle? Is here. Is here. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> Back. Okay. She's talking. She's talking. So oh. We don't hear. All right. Sometimes. Okay. Wow. Well, um. You know, I'm just trying to think if there's anything. Okay. Can you hear me now? If I stop my yes. video. Yes. 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 Okay. I'll just keep it off. Then. Okay. Sorry, Michelle. No, um. Uh, all right. The strategic planning committee is present. Um. Statement of public notice. This meeting was noticed in accordance with the open meeting law. Excellent. Public comment? I don't know. You have to tell me. Are there any members of the public there? Um, we do have um, uh, Phyllis, who is uh, also a member of the library board, present. So, hi, Phyllis. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome to the Strategic Planning Committee meeting. Um, all right. But nobody else. So. Okay. Um, do I put a motion to approve the minutes from last time? Yes. Okay. Or no, I... You, you asked for a motion. For a motion. Yeah. So I'm asking for a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the November 1st... No. Uh, May 9th. May, yeah. I shall move. I second. A motion to approve the May 9th meeting minutes. Wonderful. And Nancy is firsting that. Carrie is seconding it. Motion passes. So okay. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, aye. Okay. All right. Motion passes. Beautiful. All right. So next up. Oh, oh sorry. All for you, Michelle. Chairperson's report, I have nothing to report except technical difficulties, unfortunately. <laughs> well, they, it's probably on the library's end, so I apologize. Um, <clears throat> all right, excellent. Unfinished business, we have none. So I guess we move on to new business, discussion of the 2024 to 2028 capital plan. All right. So, um... I only have a one-page mm -hmm. budget outline. Is there, Correct. Yeah. Are yep. there any other pieces that might be missing? Nope, that's it. Okay. So, um, if uh, at the last board meeting I gave a preview of this capital plan, and normally I, with, I meet with strategic planning before the board sees it, However, um, at least my initial intent was not to have anything in 2024. Um, however, I did get some feedback from the full board that they were curious about seeing something in 2024. And this was actually good timing because I didn't have, I was still waiting to hear back from some vendor numbers. So it was good timing that the Strategic Planning Committee is meeting now in between the June and July meetings because it gave me a chance to get a little bit more information so that I can just get um, your feedback at strategic planning and then these numbers, um, the board will, full board, including you guys will see it again. So um, if I could just talk a little bit about 2024, uh, at, at the June meeting, there was nothing in there. Uh, my reasoning, I had a couple of reasons. The first was we're in a strategic planning year and we have no idea what the data is going to show us. And so I just, I wasn't quite, I didn't really have any specific like time sensitive project to put in 2024 at the time. 
And I really just wanted to see what the strategic planning um, data would yield before um, we moved on with that. My other reason uh, was a little bit more um, personal to myself. Uh, one of my goals from the personnel committee was to make sure that I don't burn out. And I will be honest, I have kind of burned out on capital projects. We've done a lot in the past five years. We've spent about $800,000 in capital projects, all necessary, right? All necessary and guided by our strategic plan. But managing those projects, the carpeting, the service desks, um, you know, all of that, the, the teen area, the children's area, the study rooms, the bathroom, it takes a lot of time. And it is time that takes me away from other things like looking at our records retention policy, reviewing job descriptions. Um, that's the reason why the marketing plan is always so slow to, to get revised. It's because I have to prioritize the vendors and the capital dollars that are in front of me because those are time sensitive, right? They're built into the year. And so I kind of um, need some time to redirect to some of these other things um, that I feel I'm not able to find time to do. So that, those were, were both reasons. Um, however, at the June meeting, if you were there, there were a couple of things that came up. Um, one, the board was concerned about possibly not having anything in 2024, like it might be a missed opportunity for us. And then uh, the other question was the bathrooms. The bathrooms came up again. And the question that some of the trustees had was like, where is this going to show up in the five-year plan? Um, at the time, I had thought like one of one of the requests from the board was to just try to figure out what we could legally do, like aesthetically to try to brighten it up. So at the time, I hadn't thought to put it in the five year plan. But the feedback that I got at the June meeting was they would like to see it in the five year plan. So as a thought exercise for today, and I'm curious your feedback, I've dropped in two projects into the 2024 um, plan or year. The first is the lamppost and fence refinishing project. And the second is the remaining two public restrooms. If you look at the five year plan, we have some big projects coming up, right? We, we did a lot on the inside. Aside from the bathrooms, we've pretty much taken care of the inside. So now, but we've really done nothing with the outside. So now after 23 years, that's now, now we're starting to get to end of life of the roof, the parking lot. Um, it would be helpful for us to have a storage shed to store all of our like salt and um, salt spreaders and you gardening equipment. Because yeah, we were just questioning the storage shed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like we, right now, all of the stuff for our community garden, we have a salt spreader that sits in the lobby year round. Uh, it'd be nice to keep some more salt there. Things like that. And not a big storage shed, no. a small one. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so... Could, but, you, could I stop you right there? Because yeah. while you were gone, we were discussing fence. Yes. The fence runs from... Yeah. Uh, oh, for all the way to... It doesn't go James to Janesville, does it? Well, not quite. But I'm actually not talking about this fence. Oh. This fence, um, and Michelle, I'm talking about the fence that borders the property, is in fantastic condition. Okay. We are very lucky because that would be very expensive. The fence that I'm actually talking about is the fence that is uh, inserted into the cement retaining wall in between Aurora and oh, the Parkland Drive. So it's not even what you thought on nope. the south end. Yes. Just... If you drive out and look to your right, you'll see that it's rusting and peeling. Oh, okay. um, that and, helps a lot. That's... Yeah. So yeah. So I'll go over these projects one by one. But but before I delve into those two projects in 2024. The reason why I dumped the restrooms in 2024, even though I'm not overly thrilled with the thought of it, is that if you look at 2025, 2026, and now 2028, we have some really big ticket items coming up. Mm -hmm. And so I, if, if I don't put the bathrooms in 2024, I really would prefer not to hit the city with multiple big projects from our department in mm -hmm. one year. Right. And I feel like if I wait to do the bathrooms until 2027, they might get... Th We've been talking about bathrooms so much. Isn't that kind of a long way out? 
Exactly. So, so my, my, that's why I feel, despite my, my desire to uh, redirect some of my time to other things, I feel like 2024 is the best year to go for the bathrooms, given that I don't, even in 2025, we just have other larger projects that might take precedent. Mm -hmm. That being said, I actually, we might be able to eke another year out of the parking lot. It's starting to get bumpy. Yeah, that hole I, is yeah, it keeps bigger. And it keeps coming back. Yeah, that, that yeah. looks really bad right now. I know. I have to get it cold patched. But um, so the parking lot and the more you push out a parking lot, the more expensive it gets because they have to dig further down to do the reconstruction. The, the, the roof... That's the one thing that I'm really not sure about, which is why I need time, dedicated time at the end of this year and next year to really figure out. Technically, in 2026, that's the technical end of life for our roof. Yeah. Obviously, the roof is not something that midway through the year you can go, whoops, you know, we need to fix it, you know. So it's something we need to plan for. Um, I obviously would like to get as most use out of it as possible. But anyway... And then in 2028, you can see we have a condensing unit. That's critical. That's one of those things that you it can't break and, and, and we can operate soundly. It's, it's um, our AC, you know, it's our air handling system. And it's at end of life in 2028. So because of those bigger projects later on, and because I think it would be waiting too long to get to 2027 to do the bathrooms, that's why I dumped the bathrooms there. Um, one of the pieces of feedback that the board gave me in June was, could we do um, separate the bathrooms out and do the women's one year and the men's the next? I was concerned that might be considered discrimination. Right. Um, I, I was under the impression you have to do them both at the same time or the same year. Yeah. So, so here's the interesting thing, and I'd like to uh, caveat, make the extreme caveat that this is just one perspective. Uh, I talked with the city attorney, and he said, likely it wouldn't be because if we finish the family restroom this year, it will. It, it's a gender-neutral bathroom, yeah, yeah, and because right. it will be fully renovated and up to ADA standards, it is a place for people to go. So if right. we decided to then make the men's um, fully updated and ADA accessible, we could still point to the gender neutral bathroom is being one that is available. That being said, I would say there is, I'm not a legal person, but I do think that there is a possibility someone could at least try to say that that's a single bathroom and given that we're a public restroom and what if I have a group of Boy Scouts, that one bathroom, it's not fair that we're stuck to just, you know, one at a time, you know, going into that restroom. Um, I also talked with the um, architect, and obviously the more we piecemeal it out, the more expensive it gets, because you have to keep paying for certain services, keep bringing back out the dumpster. There's efficiencies in doing it in one year. So uh, I would strongly recommend we not split out the bathrooms for, for those two reasons. I think if we're going to try for it, I think we just need to do the rest of them. It's is the cheapest. there a way that we could schedule those so that they're done at a time when the library is closed for part of the time or something like that? So right now, when I for the family restroom that's going to be constructed, I told them they couldn't do it during the summer because that's our busy time. Right. And I also told them that at all times our other bathrooms had to be accessible. Right. And so what I would plan to do for that project is similar we would pick an off time to do it that if they are starting to renovate um, the women's restroom, um, they would have to keep the gender, the family restroom available okay. mm -hmm. so that people could use it. Right. Um, you know, I don't know how long these types of projects take, but it would take weeks and obviously we can't, yeah. you know, close. Right. So we're, we're fortunate that we have the family restroom, mm -hmm. and it won't be ideal because they're, they're going to have to set up their construction zone, and they'll be in there. But um, at least we'll still be able to to operate. But anyway, um, I I don't know if we'll get the bathrooms approved. Um, money can get kind of tight, 
Um, and it's possible that they might consider with our family restroom done, they might consider it. They, they. The city. So I, I don't know. But um, you don't know unless you ask. And so that is the bathrooms. And that, that's where I put them um, in 2020. It just seems to me we've been talking bathrooms for right at least two years now, correct? Yeah. And we've, at we've the time, talking. the board decided to just pull out the family restroom. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Um, but I don't think the bathrooms are going to get any cheaper. And, and we mentioned that. Two years ago, yeah. the longer we put this on. And it sounds like the board, some other members of the board, they're, they're thinking we need to, like, looking at it, looking at the next five-year plan and not seeing it, I think, is an interesting visual exercise in realizing that it could so be a long time. So does the 160000 does that cover all three bathrooms then? Or mm-hmm. is that just... It does. Okay. Yep. For some reason, I thought it was a lot more. <laughs> Than that to do all well, three. so the well great. because originally it had the family restroom into it when we looked at that first number. Um, oh, I see. And now that's, that's in gone. the twenty twenty three. Yeah, that's the one that we're currently okay. working at. So that's pulled out. So this out. is for just the other two. Okay. Yeah, and the staff restroom. And the yeah. staff. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so that's why that number. I know because I did the exact same thing. At first, I was, I was like, like "Well, that seems cheap." Three. Yeah. <laughs> and then there are three options, and I picked the middle of the road. Um, cause we, we could move around some bathroom, like we could do some enhancements that would possibly make it a bit nicer, but it would increase the price into the 200s. Yeah. We and don't want gold fixtures. We, no, we don't <laughs> need gold. So. The recyclers um, will come visit us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before I move on to the lampposts and fence for finishing, does anyone have any questions about the bathroom, any... And again, we can talk about this next week, too. Any um, thoughts about where it is in the timeline? Um. I've, I said this a couple of years ago. I, the longer you put this kind of a project off, the more expensive it gets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we don't even know what other caveats will arise. You know. And right. Just, so I, I did ask the architect. I said, just as a thought exercise, what would it cost if we did this project in 2025? And she increased it at least five thousand mm-hmm. yeah. dollars. Mm-hmm. So that you know, and so just keep adding that, n- you know, number times a little bit more. Yep. 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 <clears throat> right. Yep. So. So my only worry is looking at the parking lot. Will it last that long? <laughs> like, will the patching do it, Something. or will it not? I don't want it to be that it, it that yeah. hole just turns into a massive. Yeah, um, I mean. We'll cold patch it. It'll get us through, but... Something else came up when she was presenting to the friends last week about the entrance and how skinny it is. And mm. every time I go out, I know I'm worried about somebody... Oh, yeah. Off of yeah. 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 So and it's yeah. bouncy, too. It go, is bouncy. And that'll go along with <laughs> you go the parking a lot, fast, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. In. So, yeah. 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 So the, the parking lot, the plan would be to... It's a reconstruction. It's not seal coating. So they grind out the first couple of layers, level right. it, um, gravel, cement, or whatever. I don't know. I don't do that. And then the seal coating on top, restriping. Uh, at that time, I would probably ask them to increase the accessible spaces. Yeah. Of, like maybe add another one and then maybe widen them a bit for like so because they're that there's van accessible spaces yep, yep, right and then also look at why if you're waiting to go out yeah. when someone is pulling i know in, people get nervous yeah. That's yeah. Really i know scary. i even recommended we have because we have a lot of grass space mm-hmm. east have an out and an in yeah you know, maybe that would be good yeah. it yeah. would could, cost us probably a few parking spots to do I, that because there's think, those ones yeah, I know that are some facing, facing north yeah. yeah and that is something and not to like blow a horn on this topic yet again but that's why i really need some time um next year to really think about the parking lot because i need to draw up plans i need to talk with the city i would need approval from the county to add these entrances that's right because yeah, uh, it's a county road, road. Yeah. so yeah. i desperately need time to like really figure out exactly what this project's going to look like so I can get the final numbers, and I just have not been able to the past. And what happens year. to the library when we're undergoing a project like that? Do we close? Do we have limited access? Um, they would have to do parts, sections at a time. 
And but that is a question I have to talk with yeah. contractors about. Yeah. So I I need to do like do you remember when I brought the carpeting presentations yes. before you yeah. and there was this is what would happen if the staff took off the books. This is what I need to do that thought exercise and research for the parking lot because we have some opportunities to solve some other issues, not just try to make it a bit more level and fix mm-hmm. a pothole. Mm-hmm. But I need the time to to talk to the engineers that you know make those um that can make those kind of assessments and we don't hire those people right the city does well so i would talk to the department of public works and i think they would be a good resource for that um so is that is the pipe that goes under the (laughs) i know the drainage pipe is okay i didn't know if that was like a drainage, like I know, a giant it's, culvert. It's floated or, up over the years. It really has. Yeah, I know. It's so getting, that probably will need replacing. Exactly. Too. And so I... I can't imagine it being in good shape after all this. No. And that's why 230 is the estimate that I got at the end of last year. But if, depending upon how they have to reseat that drainage pipe, mm-hmm. it could get more expensive. Yeah. So... And in the meantime, dear, the prices are going. I know, I know. I hate to sound so frugal. No, it is that drainage from the building, or is that drainage from it's, like sewer? Yeah, it's just from one end of the lot to the other. Okay, it, that's my understanding of it because the pipe goes out the other side, just into the grass. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, but I I do need to ask more questions about it. So. Um, and it's, it's very possible, so the other part of the parking lot, and I just don't know if I'm willing to wait this long to do this part, I would really like to connect the back amphitheater via a sidewalk right. from the side building. Because right now, we either have to let people up the fire exit, which is not good training for kids, that this is a door they can right. go out right. of, um, yeah. or they have to park in the front and walk along the... Um, road and cars come around that corner. Right. So from a safety perspective and accessibility, right, people come, they have canes, walkers, uh, they could have a wheelchair, strollers. (laughs) Strollers. Um, You know, it is not level ground to get from the side of the building out. And so I would like to have um, a a sidewalk that connects from the side of the building, from the side door to the back. Now... I was curious, because yeah. there's a side door on the other side. I've never mm-hmm. gone over on that side. Yeah. Is that side easier it would to make be, a sidewalk? No. Because there's no road. <laughs> yeah. So it would be, but you're adding it so would be longer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it would yeah. be it yeah. so much distance. Yeah. Okay. Now, the, the only, the problem is it's a bit ditchy there, for lack of a better descriptive word. Yeah, it's a it's, huge ditch. It is. A and there's, um, <laughs> it, it's also a drainage point there, too. And so I brought mm-hmm. DPW out. They were talking with me. Oh. Michelle has a question. Um, so anyway, that's a project I want to do that I can either fold into the parking lot, but I hate to wait that long because we're we're doing story time programs all the time. Michelle, go. So sorry. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. I can't hear you if you're talking. Um, you could also type it in if the audio is not working. We're really doomed today with Rick. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> One thing after the other. Maybe Michelle might be typing something. Sorry, Michelle. Um I will just, oh, I've been trying to chime in. Could I call, oh, yep, you can call, yep, you can call mine. Um, Hold on a second. Um, Um. also think there's actually a phone number you can well dial into the zoom meeting but i don't know i would do my cell phone hi michelle hey sorry i 
just thought it'd be easier to talk than type on a quiz. Yeah. You know? um, I'm sorry if there's just that. So, I'm hearing everything that you're saying. What would it um, help? Because it sounds like the parking lot is a lot more prep than the roof. Is that correct? Um, I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, because, um, how do I put this? I haven't really researched the roof that much either. Except that in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin, we have experts who give us the life of a roof. And this building is now 20, it's 23 three years. years old. Uh, we're pushing it. Right. Usually, My condo was just re-roofed after 18 years. And usually when we they give that it. estimate, it's based on that you'll have Number, some leaks by that point. By that point, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, and, and what's, your, what's your question or statement, Michelle? Sorry, let me, I'm just trying to mute on mine and see if it clears it up for me. Um, well, I was wondering if we switched out the roof and the parking lot, that would give you extra, because it sounds like the parking lot and walkways and everything, it's going to be a much bigger project as far as your end, planning it. But the roof, I would think you would just get a couple of quotes and they pick the one and they do it, right? Like there's no planning, we're not restructuring the building or the roof line or anything. It is, it is true that we would not be restructuring the building. I think the only the, the only larger query about the roof is our gutters need to be redone at that time and um, trying to figure out if we can find a gutter solution that is has more seamless gutters as opposed to the, the spaces in between, which is what's causing the leaks. Um, you know, to Carrie's point, we have had a couple leaks over the years, nothing that ends up being in the same location. The thing about the roof is it's just a, it's a flaw in its design that when the snow, uh, when the wind blows at just the right angle, then the snow sort of gathers in, um, I, I don't know the correct terminology. I just know that it's not like there's a big gaping hole in the roof. It's just, um, some bad luck, which I'm hoping with the re-roofing they might be able to address. So the, the two things that I have to talk to them about the roof is how to prevent this um, when the wind blows and these leaks happen scenario, and then two, um, trying to figure out a better gutter solution that won't have the water leaking through the seams of the gutters um, down in. Um, you, know, I, you know, I don't know, and, and I think that's why... It, you bring up a good point, and that is I I am estimating that the parking lot should be done in 2025 because that's what DPW told me was the end of life for the parking lot. And 2026, because that's the end of life based on technical years for the roof. Now, there's no, like, law or rule, right? In theory, our parking lot could last longer if the cold patch holds, and our roof could last longer if... They're both weather dependent, right? We yeah. Get, we get that. So, okay. and I think that's the thing that causes me some some stress is that these are huge numbers, and it's not something that like if we if I blow the 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 estimate that it's like something that's like oh it's only ten thousand dollars we can fix this within the year with our operating budget. This is a big amount yeah. of money. This is the reason why we have capital planning because we need time to prepare for the fact that this. We need to save up for this money. We need to plan for this money. So um, while I don't want to, while I like to wring every bit of piece of life out of the parking lot and the roof, I am nervous that it will end up costing us more if we move on. So I've put them tentatively there. I'm not saying that they, we couldn't push them out, um, but... No, sorry. I was suggesting swap them. Like, we did the roof in 2020. Right. And the lot in 2026. Well, to give you more time because you said you're burning out, and that's concerning. Also, is there anything of this you could delegate to somebody to get like preliminary estimates to you, and then 
I mean, so th- this is this portion of the job is really where my my responsibilities come in, right? Like I I I can delegate other things than I have. Like I've started delegating some of the strategic planning, um, like data collection points to people and things like that. In terms of like capital projects where we're talking about roofs and parking lots and liability, that that's really something I wouldn't feel comfortable delegating. It's 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 frankly just a matter of me trying to be a bit more realistic about what I can accomplish in in any given year. So I, I'm, I'm I'm learning that. So what you'll see is a much more realistic, uh, I think, action plan next year from me. So uh, is there a safety issue with the with the parking lot that we need to address? Because I don't see any safety issues with the roof. I see a lot of other problems but for public safety yeah should the roof should the parking lot be prioritized yeah so michelle to to your point that the reason why i hesitate to to swap the two is i do see the parking lot crumbling a bit more um there is this we have one um pothole along the side of the building another on the front that that bump seems to be getting more bumpy, which is the culvert that's running across it. Even though people have been driving through that entrance for years, I never fail to see this sort of cringy moment where it just seems like people don't feel comfortable and don't feel safe when they're entering and exiting. So um, I would, I think it would benefit patrons more, given that we don't have like active consistent leaks in one place. I think it would benefit the patrons more to have the, the, lot. the parking lot yeah. sooner, gotcha. especially if there's a chance of injury to anybody. And, and and really, like I said, I think for me, it's just I have been building action plans that are just they have too many components to it that fall in my area. I need to spread them out more. And that was just a learning thing for me. So um, I will. I'll be better at that next year. So that that's, I think, what I can do to be more mindful of it. The good news about the bathrooms in 2024 is a lot of that legwork is already done because mm-hmm. I've all, I, we already have the architect. The plans are already drawn up. Um, I've already selected the materials because we're just going to do the same, you know, flooring and surfaces that we're doing in the family restroom. So And I've already taken a project to bid once, so I know what that process looks like. So unlike the rest of these projects, this one has the probably less um, legwork to do on it. So. Okay. Um, yeah, so that that's the bathrooms. Um, I'm hoping to do more research on the parking lot. Um, sort of in the fall, and I know that doesn't mean anything for 2024, but I feel like maybe by the winter I'll be able to have a much more um, educated conversation with you all about whether or not 2025 is the year for that parking lot. So, okay. so I'll, I'll keep that in mind, though, Michelle, and, and we'll see what, what we need to do. Um, the lamppost and fence refinishing. So the lampposts I had put in 2025, but that's actually another easy project to execute because there's not a lot to it. It's basically, I already know what the company is because the city is also refinishing their lampposts. I, right. I already know what the process is because DPW told me what it was. Mm-hmm. DPW will take down the lampposts. Um, we have a variety of lampposts in various... Um, I know this is kind of hard to see, but if you, um, don't they have to conform with whatever the city's doing in terms of the process, it'll be the same. So the, the, our lampposts are different than the ones on Janesville road. They look different, but, but they are actually suffering from the same problem, which is they are rusting. Uh, Um, we have some that have no rust at all. Some that have low rust, some that have medium and some that have high rust. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but the thing, and we have 21 lampposts, six of them have high rust, five of them have medium, six have mild rust, and four have no rust damage yet. 
The thing is, the ones that are closer to the road that get sprayed with salt mm -hmm. are corroding faster. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just surface degradation. However, if we let them continue to rust, they'll get holes, and then we have to buy new lampposts. Yeah. And it's cheaper to have them removed. They'll be sandblasted in a kiln right here in Muskego and repainted, and then they'll last another 20, 25 years. So... Um, I think we need to um, strike while the iron's hot on this. One, because the company's already doing the city lamppost. The city's familiar with the project. They, they, they know the project needs to happen. So mm -hmm. they're familiar with it as well. Right. Um, and we need to protect these or we're going to be spending more. Um, and then the, the same issue that is happening to these lampposts is happening to that side fence. If you if you're leaving today, go out on Parkland and you'll see especially the bottom part of the fence is just peeling and um, rusting. If we let it go longer and the holes happen, the whole fence will just tip over. And we know it's ours. It's not ours. <coughs> it's, ours. it's ours. Yep. It's that beautiful green. Um, it's a liability thing, right? We need that fence there because there's a bit of a drop. Yep. Um, at the last board meeting, some board members had some questions about could we replace it with like a, a poly plastic. Um, that was not recommended based on the fact that this is stronger. And um, the recommendation to me for this is to remove it, um, do a similar treatment to what's happening here, but then um, shield or sleeve the bottom part of the fence with an aluminum coating so that it won't rust. Because, again, it's the salt that's hitting the bottom half. That's why the bottom half is rusting. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I do, and because everything went wrong today regarding this meeting, one of the other things that went wrong is that they were supposed to get me a final number for what it would cost to do the fence. I don't have that number. So it's $1,000 per lamppost. So that's about $21,000. Uh, for our lamp posts, I threw in another about six thousand dollars for the fence as an estimate, but I'm mm -hmm. waiting for the final cost on that. So um, mm -hmm. I'm I should have it by t tomorrow. I'm going to call him after this meeting, um, and for sure by Tuesday. So we will have a better number um, on Tuesday for that. So, so how did you come up with the thirty? Just... Um, it twenty one thousand for the lamp posts, mm -hmm. and then I just okay. Added, embellished added a little more money to remind me that they're that it's not just the lamppost that's what we do with husbands honey just embellish it a little bit well, little little boost up so i'll get a i'm gonna get a better number for you all by tuesday um but so though and, and he actually told me that the so both of those projects i think are time sensitive so that we don't lose them so that project should be easy to execute and i think we should do next year the bathrooms I just don't think we can afford to wait um, long and with the parking lot and the roof looming and the condensing unit on the, the edge of that, I think now's the time to see what we can do. Okay. You want to just comment on public furniture? Oh, yeah. Um, public furniture, uh, that is... Um, like a can that I've been kicking a bit down the road, again, to try to maximize the resources we've invested in. Um, we have public meeting room chairs, and they are old. And, but they're not like, there's no stuffing not, falling out right, of it. Not falling they're apart. still cushing. So um, this was in our previous five-year plan, this amount of money. And when I looked at it five years ago, I thought, we don't need to do this. So I've moved it about eight years down from when it was originally identified. And by 2027, I think it's worth at least in 2026 when we're having this conversation again, because you'll all still be here. Um, loving, loving every minute of this. Um, it's at least worth a chance to then look at these chairs and go. Yeah, by then they might be kind of gross. Right. <laughs> and maybe yeah. we can kick it another eight years. I don't know. But at that point, I think it'll be worth another look. Um, so that's the public furniture and then the door improvement slash key card access. The city has, um, moved all of their, um, doors to a keyless entry. So a card you put up to it goes green, lets you in. 
Uh, the benefit of that from a security perspective is if someone loses their key, instead of having to rekey the entire building, you just deactivate the card. Right now, if someone were to lose a key to our building, for safety reasons, we would have to rekey all the locks. How many people here have a key? Many. Um, I would say probably there's probably about 18, 19 keys issued. So it's, um, it's something that I kind of wanted to put on the radar for an eventual, it's, it's been working, but it, I think it's a, I tried to pick a year when it was a little bit lower, but it, it, I think it'd be a good security upgrade to do eventually. Yeah. Oh, and the storage shed, right now it's in here in 2025, but I have a meeting on Monday with someone from Connect Academy through the school district because Tracy had said, could Connect Academy build the shed for us? Um, yeah. I've also been reaching out to different tr um, scouting troops right. in Kate because I, I have a couple of Eagle Scout projects that I would love to, to give to someone, one involving landscaping, mm -hmm. um, and then I was thinking one for the shed. Um, but I but they said they'd keep me in mind, but nothing's come up yet. But anyway, I have a meeting on Monday with the Connect Academy coordinator um, to see if they might have the skills and or be willing to make it a project. That sounds great. So mm -hmm. that, depending upon how my meeting on Monday goes, that line item might disappear. Okay. So. Nice. Is that something where we would buy the materials and they would build it? Correct, yeah. Or is that something we could apply maybe for funding from a store for the materials, like the new... Uh the new farm, yeah, the new fleet farm, yeah, that would be interesting, um, because especially if it's the library and the school district working together, that might be some good polit um, corporate capital to, um, and to do. And political. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a good point, Michelle. And I would send the, the students to do it. It's harder to say no to students than to me. <laughs> good plan. All right. So, any other any other thoughts? Anything that I'm missing? This is not pertinent to this meeting, but I do think I'd like to share with you what a marvelous job this lady does. Um, last Friday for the Friends, we oh, had, yeah. you really nail it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I love. Those groups and it was it was a really productive focus group. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah. lots of lots of great feedback from yep. them. Yep. Um, and yeah, strategic planning is going well. Uh, we have about seventy surveys so far, and we just did a formal um, advertising of it uh, starting uh, at last week. So uh, I'm, I'm my fingers crossed. I'm going to get to five hundred. So we'll see if we can get there. But uh, I did a focus group this morning with the Bridges Library System staff. Uh, I know Sam did one on Monday. So focus groups are happening. The visual boards we're about to take down, and those got amazing responses. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I did my first website usability study with uh, someone, and that was very interesting. I learned a lot just from observing that one person. Already found some errors on our website, so looking forward to getting <laughs> getting those fixed as well. So yeah, it's it's moving along. Um, yeah. I took the survey. You took the survey? Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> All right, anything else? Not for me. Oh, I have nothing. Yeah. Carrie, anything else? Well, I appreciate everyone's patience, and Carrie, I appreciate your <laughs> miracle of showing up. <laughs> I did see Michelle. Yeah. Michelle was like, I'm going to see you on Thursday, and I went, what? Oh, that yeah, was, that's right. That was just great timing. And Phyllis, I appreciate you tolerating the... I think uh, she needs a badge. <laughs> extra participator. Extra, yeah, yeah. <laughs> extra credit. Yeah. All right. Um... Sounds good. I'm going to end the recording then. Michelle, it was good good to hear and see you. <laughs> yes.
All right. All right. I will see you next Tuesday. Sounds good. Oh, do, do I need to end the meeting? Uh, oh, gosh. I forgot. This is a formal meeting. All right. All right. Can, we don't have to vote on the plan, right? It's just Nope. Um, discussion. Yeah, just, just discussion. So. So can I get a motion to adjourn, right? Uh, so do we just have to do the communications and miscellaneous business? Oh, sorry. I have nothing. Communications and miscellaneous business is authorized by law. Nothing. Nothing okay. here. All right. Adjournment. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> Excellent. Everyone in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Anyone against? <laughs> Anyone in Spain? Excellent. <laughs> All right. Meetings adjourned at 2.07. At 2.07. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye, Michelle.